Understanding schematics and contactors. This is video number two. In our first video, we talked about how the schematic diagram for relays and contactors is, are, are difficult to understand because the schematic diagram shows the and depicts the contactors and relays in several different places on the schematic when in fact it's just one device itself. Now the contactor is used in the condenser to start the condenser fan and the compressor to give you cooling for an air conditioning or heat pump system. And if it is a heat pump it will also start the compressor and condenser fan for the heating mode. Uh, we're going to take a look at that Lennox system again that we looked at in our first video and what we'll do is we'll trace the um, contactor operation through the schematic and try and make some sense of that. Now remember our schematic diagrams help us take this big mess over here and turn it into a nice nice road map to follow and, and understand what's going on. The one thing I want to stress to you is that when you're taking a look at a schematic diagram it is for it is assuming that the system is properly charged it's also assuming that there's power applied and that it is sitting idle and nothing is operating at this time it's just sitting there waiting for a signal to turn on so again here is our 230 volt inputs to the system sitting here and let's take a look at first of all our compressor contactor right here. Now this this part of the compressor contactor depicts this part of the compressor contactor right here and as you can see on the on the diagram that it is what's called normally open. So with this 230 volt power coming in right here it can't pass through that open connection that you see and on the contactor this these, here's a contact on one side contact on the other and what will happen is no power the power that's applied here to the bottom can't pass through because this part of the contactor is raised up above the bus bar and not making contact and that's how it's depicted right here the other half of the contactor the other leg of the 230 volts you can see it's a straight straight bus no contacts so that power comes through and comes up right through here the fan to the fan motor but nothing is operating because the other half of the contactor is open so that power is just kind of sitting out here on the compressor and the condenser fan motor this straight bus bar of the contactor depicts this part of the contactor right here and this is just a straight piece of brass that comes through here so the incoming power comes in and it follows its way through up and out that wire right there so that's how it sets before there's any type of call for cooling to turn the condenser on so let's come back out here to the schematic diagram now our thermostat is sitting on in the wall on the house and the Y terminal is what energizes the contact so when the thermostat calls for cooling it is going to send a 24 volt signal through the air handler which this represents then through the uh, condenser bus bar right here and then down through and into the control board Y1 terminal now this 24 volts is applied through the Y1 terminal is routed through a couple of, of safety devices high and low pressure switch 
we're not going to get into those today we just we're just going to assume that everything is good and our 24 volt signal is passed through the control board and is applied to the Y1 out terminal and that 24 volts applied to the Y1 out terminal as you can see on the schematic goes to K1 which is the contactor right over here so that 24 volts coming out comes out of the control board and it goes into the 24 volt coil of the contactor when that 24 volts is applied to the coil it is going to pull this contact down and that passes the power through the contact so when we have a call for cooling and we have that 24 volts applied to the coil of the contactor this normally opened contact now is cl a closed contact so that 230 volts that's sitting out here waiting to get applied to the compressor and condenser fan will now be applied now remember we talked earlier that this part of the power is already sitting here 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 and here and when we close this other leg of the contactor now we have completed that circuit so that we now have current that's able to flow through the compressor to start it up and run it we also have current through the condenser fan motor that is able to start it up and run it and it goes through the fan relay here which we'll talk about later so now we have completed that circuit so that is pretty much it so what you're going to be looking for is if you have 24 volts on Y1 out to the contactor coil you're going to be measuring and looking for 24 volts across the contactor coil if you have your 24 volts applied you're going to be looking to see if this contactor is pulled in and in fact that power is coming through and measuring to make sure you have 230 volts of power coming out on your contactor so that is how you start to use a schematic diagram to help troubleshoot and see what how each one of these components affect each other okay so that is it for t this video we will continue on our understanding schematic journey with subsequent videos we'll talk about um, the fan control relay we will also talk about high and low pressure switches and the crankcase heaters and how this all works through the control board schematics and the condenser if there's any questions send me an email log in to your student account and shoot me a private message or post it on our student forum and I'll see you on the next video